All right. Um, I guess we're going to do some poker problems now and uh, try to find the correct uh, game theoretic solution for, for problems. Okay. Uh, this isn't uh, this isn't a real poker game, but uh, it kind of plays one on TV. Uh, it, uh, it, it you can apply it to a lot of river situations. For example, when the flush actually comes on the river, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, great. I, I, I love this auditorium. Like, you know, I think auditoriums are just as big. I usually have to scream, and I'm, I'm actually talking without screaming, so it's good. So. Uh, the thing is that the pot is $100. Uh, you can say both players add in 15 this game, or kind of uh, $100 is thrown into the pot by some benevolent being or something like that. It's <laughs> that I guess it wouldn't be zero sum. It would be 100 sum. But um, anyway, zero sum also means constant sum. Uh, okay, so there's $100 in this pot. Uh, where, where have one round of betting, X draws one card and, and wins if it's a heart, loses otherwise. So, who knows what the correct strategy is for both players? Mm, let's try to figure it out. Uh, so, should Y ever bet? First of all. Yes. Wait, why should Y bet? Uh, let's talk about Y betting. Uh, I actually don't think it's a good idea for Y to bet. Um, because this is a situation where we, X is clairvoyant. He knows whether he wins or not. Sure, Y wins three quarters of the... Of, of, what? After the draw. Oh, no, no, no. There, uh, this is only after the draw. X draws his card and looks at it. <laughs> okay. X already drew his card and looked at it. The question of what to do before uh, the draw is probably pretty easy. Why should just bet as much as he can? Um, because he has a 3 to 1 edge. And he doesn't want X to have the implied odds after the river. So. Uh, that, 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 so, so, so X draws one card and looks at it, and then there's a one round of betting. So should Y ever bet? No, because X knows whether he wins or not, right? This is like a situation of betting the king. Okay, so Y shouldn't bet. Uh, let's talk about X. Um, should X bet? When, uh, when should X bet? All the time. <laughs> All the time? If you know the other. Yeah. Wait. What? Uh, let, let, let's look at the possibilities. If X gets a heart, should X bet? Yes. Yes, X should bet when he gets a heart because he knows he's going to win. He's just trying to extract money. Uh, should he bust? So, uh, let's, let's kind of think this through. By the way, there's um, kind of more systemic ways to solve these games. You can actually uh, <coughs> write all sorts of various computer algorithms to solve these games. One uh, algorithm I'll tell you is called fictitious play. Basically, you just take X's strategy and Y's strategy. You do the best response to Y's strategy, and you add a little bit of that to X's strategy, and you keep iterating. So these, these, these kind of inter things will get you the solution. But what we'd like to do with these problems is kind of intuitively understand the game theory solutions to these problems so that we can understand these and be able to play poker. Okay, so if X draws and it's a heart, X should bet at least something, right? Um, uh, should X bluff some of the time? Yes. What if X never bluffs? What's the equity of the game? Brought Y always wins three quarters of this pot. He doesn't have to pay off. Uh, so let's just let X bet $100. Uh, suppose X just bets $100 when he has a heart. Um, we'll, we'll get to the question of whether X should bet less later. It, it turns out X should not bet less. X should, 
bet $100 when he has a heart. Uh, when should he bluff? How often should he bluff? Wait, what? So X always bets when he gets a heart. Uh, right, so a quarter of the time he's going to he, he's going to look, he's going to get a heart, he's going to bet. Um, how often should he bluff? That's kind of the question. Uh, you know, at the beginning we talked about making Y indifferent if you're calling or not, right? Uh, if, if X bluffs too much, then Y can just call all the time. If X bluffs too little, then Y can just, like, not call. So what percentage of bluffs to bet uh, does it have to be for, for, for Y? How often does X have, uh, uh, to be more clear, how often does X have to bluff such that uh, Y is indifferent to calling? Like, you don't care whether Y calls or not. One third of the time he doesn't have a heart? One third of the So are you talking about like when he, be careful here, like you mean one third of the time when he doesn't have, like when he has a spade? Yes. Well, let's see what happens if X uh, bets whenever he has a heart or a spade. Uh, what, what, what's Y's correct strategy? No, 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 no. If X bets uh, when he has a heart or a spade, Y should call. Why? He's getting what? Yeah, he's he, he he's uh, Y is winning two hundred dollars if he's right, and he's losing a hundred dollars if he's wrong, right? So he's getting two to one. This is a simple like kind of pot odds guy. It costs hundred bucks. The guy bets hundred bucks. You're getting two to one. So, so you only have to be right how often? Yeah, you 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 only have to be right a third of the time. So uh, the one third comes. Let's be careful what the one third means. You think, oh, okay, well it's one third. But what does one third mean? That means that uh, x betting to x bluffing has to equal. This has to be two to one. If uh, x, this is value betting, meaning basically x has a heart. If X has a heart, uh, the times X bets when he has a heart, the time he bets when he doesn't have a heart should be two to one. That makes Y different to, 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 to call it. You see that? Um, like if I bet with all of my hearts and half of my spades, then what would you do is Y? Then you're getting exact odds of call. You don't know. And it doesn't matter to me what you do, right? So uh, that's okay. What's Y strategy? How often should Y call? What you guys think about it for like a couple of seconds? It's a percentage. How often? Is, why? Why doesn't have any information? Why just sees X with his card, and he goes, "Well, first of all." Uh, what would you think in this situation is why? What I would think is, gee, I hope he doesn't bet and I just like win the pot. <laughs> I, I th by the way, that, that's the thought that goes through my hand mind a lot in poker. <laughs> I've gotten to the river here, I have a pretty good hand, I don't want to bet it, but I just hope we just show down and I win the pot. <laughs> you know, you get in this situation a lot. Uh, however, X bets. He bets a hundred. What should Y do? Yeah. You, oh, you, you, you're thinking it's the other game. You should call a third of the time. If Y is calling a third of the time, what should X do? You, you know, okay, you're playing against me. You're playing this game. I'm going to say, if you bet, I'm going to call a third of the time. What should you do? Always bluff, yeah. Like, I'm not even going to look at my card, I'm going to bluff. <laughs> because uh, I'm definitely going to get a call a third time when it's a heart. But if it's not a heart, uh, why, 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 why am I profitable bluffing, though? You're risking 100 to win 100, you're going to win more than 
right, right, right. I'm risking 100 to win 100, and I'm going to successfully get the 100, what, two-thirds of the time, right? Okay, there lies the answer to the question. Um, so the right answer isn't to call a third of the time, but what? Half the time, yes. Uh, so y call equals the half. So now we know uh, X's strategy, or one of X's strategy. I'm going to bet with all hearts, and I'm going to bluff uh, half the time. Half the time when it's a spade. I'm going to bluff with the ace, king, queen, jack, ten, nine, and half of the eight of spades. Uh, something like whatever. <laughs> No, that's not right. Uh, Ace, King, Queen, Jack, Ten, Nine, Eight, and half of the Seven of Spades. Um, but anyway, so let's. What's the equity of this game? How much is? How much? Is it? So the pot's hundred bucks, right? Uh, how? What's a fair settlement of, of the pot, given this betting afterwards? If there's no betting, the fair settlement of the pot is twenty-five x and seventy-five y, right? So what's a fair settlement of the pot, given? The betting after, after afterwards. Anybody figure out? Okay, let's do a kind of a quick trick here. There's two ways to actually do this. Um, uh, first of all, we made why if we bet and bluff in the two to one ratio, we've met. We've made y indifferent to uh, calling or folding. So, right, if, if, if we bet all our hearts and half of our spades, then we've met y indifferent uh, to calling or folding. So, since we've made, so since it doesn't matter whether y calls or folds, let's just suppose y folds when we bet. Uh, what's our equity in the pot? What? 37.5, this must be MIT. <laughs> Three eighths, correct. 37.5 dollars, right. And that's because a quarter of the time, this is all the hearts, and this is like an eighth of the time, this is, this is the hearts plus half the space. So yeah, 37 dollars. Uh, let's see if we can get, uh, so if y calls half the time, so another way of doing it is if y calls half the time, it doesn't matter whether x bluffs or not, right? Let's just check our math. If y calls half the time, it doesn't matter whether x bluffs or not. So let's suppose x never bluffs, all right? Uh, this, this is uh, one of the plays that um, we, we know it's not optimal, but we know it'll return the same thing if y calls half the time. So what's x's equity? A quarter time he's going to bet, right? Right. So he, he's going to win a quarter time, but he's going to get called half the time when he bets, right? So the quarter time he's going to bet, so it's going to be a half times a quarter again, and that's going to be 3 eighths. So this is 37.5, right? Uh, do you, you see how we get this? Y is calling half the time. So if X is just value betting his heart, he's going to win. Uh, but half the time, he's also going to get another pot size bet. OK. So the equity of this game is 37.5 to X, 62.5 to Y. Um, question number two. Uh, OK. So question number two is the same. Um, it's a hundred dollar pot, right? It's the same. <laughs> this question, this, this, this question of who's the same, we can just uh, use some of this. Well, that's the way. This is dangerous. Ah. Uh, okay. So number two. Uh, X. Texas correct strategy here. Oh, 
Uh, oh, before we go here, let, let, let's have a short discussion of why I should bet in the entire pot instead of. Uh, it's like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe Y is not calling enough. Y is only calling half the time. Uh, maybe I can just sucker him into calling more if I bet less, right? <laughs> why, why is that not right? Because he's perfect information about it. Yeah, he has perfect information. He should actually take advantage of that. It is true. Why is going why is, why is going to call more? In fact, if if X bets a fraction of the plot S, okay, this is the fraction of the plot X bets. Y should call one over one plus S at the time. This is actually Y's best response. So if if, if X only bets half the pot, Y should call um, two thirds at a time. But obviously this is worse. Why? Than betting all the time. Well, because if you betting the full pot, betting half the pot, if you have a heart, uh, it, you, you're going to get called half the time. So you, your your EV when you have a heart is 50 more. If you're only going to get called two thirds of the time when you bet half the pot, you're going to get less than 50 dollars. You're going to get two thirds of 50. Um, you, in fact, you can see that your payoff is S over one plus S because. Uh, this is the percentage you're going to get called, and the amount you make is going to be S. So you try to maximize S over 1 plus S. And um, uh, you can see that this is maximized when X is largest. So if X has perfect information, and Y knows that X has perfect information, the thing to do is to kind of bet the whole thing. Uh, let's talk about uh, question number two. So, um, I'm going to see how many, we're probably not going to go through all these problems, but uh, I'm, we'll, we'll do this problem and then I'll stop for questions, okay? You guys can think about the other problems. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll send the solution to, to these problems. Uh, uh, so that you can talk about in a future class. So, let's just go through this problem because it's kind of interesting. Suppose X wins and it's not a club. So X is now winning three quarters of the time. So if there's no betting, X should win $75. X's equity should be more or less than 75. More, because X actually has perfect information and there's betting. Whenever there's betting and there's perfect information, it's good for you. And you, ha and you have perfect information, it's good for you. Just remember that. Uh, so what's X's correct, what's, what, what's the correct strategy? Does anybody know? Always bluff. Always bluff. Why? So if you have a, if you don't have a club, then you got and you win. And then if you do have a club, he, he's from the opponent's perspective, there's still a three quarters chance he's losing and he's only going to the ones. He's just always going to fold. Right. If you always bet the whole pot, your opponent should always fold. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the key point. Uh, you, you, you're trying to find this equilibrium here, but this equilibrium here doesn't exist because. X just has too many good hands. Uh, a, a few situations come up in No Limit where one important thing in No Limit is to think about what, what's your range of hands. A lot of times just a monster draw comes in and it's like, oh my god, he's got too many good hands. And so if you're at the point where you actually have too many good hands, you just bet the whole thing. You ship the whole thing and what should Y do? What's Y's correct strategy? Okay, X, all, X, uh, always bet, Y, always win. Okay, so this is the optimal strategy. This is a, a generic case of optimal strategy. So what's X equity in the pot? $100, X always gets a pot. In fact, what's X best play? Not to look at the card and just bet, right? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, here's a question. You're Y, but X is going to be a little tricky. What X bets $10 instead of $100? Now, now how often should you call? What if X bets $1? What? You should call all the time. <laughs> yes, the 
cost still 100. I'm betting a dollar is X. Okay, okay, this is just this kind of gambler. You have 100 to 1 odds, yes, that's true. <laughs> if I'm bluffing o o only 1% of the time or more, you should call. That's true. I, 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 I would agree with that statement. Yeah? I mean, I guess I would say you should never call because unless you think that's going to be Right, right, right. And by game theory, if you're going, well, you should do this unless you think X is an idiot means optimally you should do this. <coughs> so even if X gets $1, the correct play for Y is the fold. Like, not call 1 over 1 plus S at a time. So if X bets a dollar, Y should fold. You're like, well, why should Y fold? He's getting 100 to 1. What if he bets, like, a cent? Well, Y should still fold. Um, and you see why? It's kind of a sucker bet. It's like, if Y is going to, X can just claim the pot. X can just go, ah, well, just give me the pot. The pot is mine, right? <laughs> if X, like, tries to put a little bit of a bet out there, it's sort of like him trying to uh, get you to call, right? Like, he doesn't have to do anything. Why, why is optimal play, like, a co-optimal play for Y is just to leave. <laughs> right? It's like, uh, X is starting with his car, he goes, you know, he's doing this whole, whole, whole ritual of thing. What, what you should do is Y is like, uh, just go to the bathroom, like, see the box. <laughs> So anyway, uh, this is one of the interesting, uh, this shows like kind of the interesting, we've only solved a couple of simple game theory problems, only one screen, but this shows you sort of the type of analysis that's kind of done. And like on the river, you sort of have to figure out kind of what your range of hands is. Whether you're in a situation where you're winning three quarters of the time, or you're in a situation winning one quarter of the time, whether you have more information than your opponent about the river or less information, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's part of the idea. So I'll, I'll open up to questions. Any questions at all? You know, I'm cringing. Yeah? With regards to the last argument about what happens if, uh, let's say, first player bets $1, and you said that uh, you never call it because uh, you said.